Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us at this Your Overseas Home uh, webinar, Spanish Golden Visa, Can I Still Apply? Last chance. Today, we will be chatting with Ricardo Ippoliti from Holborn Assets and Dusan Marinkovic, Head of Client Relationships at Orients. And uh, they're both in Spain. I'm in the UK. Um, well, why don't we just start off by getting acquainted. Uh, Ricardo, can you introduce yourself and tell us how Hoban Assets can help our viewers uh, today? Yes, sure. Thank you, Christopher. And hello, Dusan. Thank you for, for the invite here. Um, as you said, my name is Ricardo Ippoliti and I am a lawyer here in Spain, registered here in Spain. And uh, we take care of the visa aspects uh, at Holborn. So Holborn is a wealth management for, uh, firm established in uh, 1998. Um, started off with uh, wealth management uh, advice. Uh, later on, given the changes in the world and everything, there's been um, some changes towards immigration advice as well. And obviously, uh, there's been lots of uh, interest and uh, different type of programs in the world. And obviously, Spain is one of them. I must say that there must be a bit of a could be a bit of a rush here given the changes that the government has announced so obviously it would be a good webinar to take into consideration when um, you are interested in an option for a visa to spain that can lead to permanent residency and later on even to to citizenship anyway we will get into details in a few minutes about this sure okay brilliant and uh, do send tell us tell us about yourself and orient Absolutely. So, hi, um, Christopher, Ricardo. Thank you for joining me at this stage. And um, hi, everyone who joined um, the webinar. I'm Dusan. I'm head of sales at uh, Orient and Benrock. We're um, we're I would say a one stop shop together with with Holborn, helping clients uh, obtain property, particularly commercial one, um, here in Spain, and um, obtain a golden visa based on that property. We've been in business for. Um, I personally have been in this industry for for over um, eight years. Um, and so is Orient. Excellent. Okay, and myself, I'm Christopher Nye. I'm Senior Editor at Your Overseas Home and also at Spain Property Guides. I've been writing about uh, buying and moving to Spain for 20 years. And um, so our aim is to help you move to Spain. Simple as that. The format we'll take is that um, we we'll talk through your options with Ricardo and uh, Dusan, who, who, who have a present presentation. We're talking mainly about the golden visa, of course, uh, in its in its many forms. Um, we but we want to hear from you too. We don't want to. We want to make it as interactive as, as possible. So please put your questions into the questions tab, which you should see on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, and just to get um, in the mood, uh, um, get some practice um, typing. Um, why don't people just put in uh, where they are at the moment? So UK, US, Australia, wherever you are, just tell us where you are and then we can get um, be just out of interest. Uh, but more to the point, uh, do put in your questions too. So, um, oh, blimey, all over the place. We've got Florida, we've got Belgium, we've got UK. Um, yep, lots, lots, of, um, lots of the world covered there very quickly. Uh, I wonder if, yep, yep, UK... Um, middle of middle of the US, so we're getting lots of people from um, lots of people from the other side side of the pond, which is great to hear. I wonder if how uh, uh, some already in Spain. Okay, brilliant. So we're getting a good idea there of where people are looking to move to Spain from. So uh, I think the best thing is if I let Ricardo kick off, uh, Ricardo and Dusan kick off with their with their pre uh, presentations, and then we will get into your questions later. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So, yes, I think the best way to understand the, the way this visa works and the entire process is to start by understanding the basics of the visa. Okay. So that's the first thing. And then we can get into the uh, details about the eligible type of investments. So, first of all, we're talking about a visa that was introduced a little over 10 years ago. And as I said before, uh, this law and therefore this type of visa might not exist in the following weeks. So it's important to uh, understand these parts uh, and uh, act uh, um, quickly if there is an interest in the in Spain uh, Golden Visa. Now, first of all, we have to remember that we're talking about a visa application. So in terms of visa application, there is a visa applicant. There is one person who's the visa applicant, and then the rest of the family can be included in the visa, but one investment has to be made. 
Okay, so we're not talking about each person has to make an investment. The investment in terms of eligibility will have to be of at least 500,000 euros, and I'll get into this in a few minutes. Now, talking about the applicant, there's no age specific requirements. You must be at least 18 years of age. You can include your spouse, your partner, you can include your children, uh, can be adults as well, so they can be over 18 years of age. You can also include your family in terms of parents. If you want to bring them along, you can. Uh, the important thing when we're talking about uh, members uh, within the family, they have to be members of the family unit. Okay, so they need to be considered as part of the family. And if they are over 18 years of age, then what is important and one of the factors that uh, has to be looked at is the financial dependency, because that is very important to take into consideration. Now, there are no specific requirements. We're not talking about a skill visa here. Okay, so we don't we don't have specifics about you know the type of work that the person is working in or the education background. We're talking about the fact that the basics have to be satisfied. So therefore, the person has to be in good health. Um, and at the same time, it must be um, of good character. We can get into more specifics about, about this part, but I mean, that is, uh, these are the basics about the eligibility of the person. And um, we, what we need to understand is the fact that you have a financial capacity. Okay, the financial capacity is pretty much the most important part here, because based on the financial capacity, you will understand with your financial advisor what type of investment you'd like to make, and at the same time, we'll have to fit it in within what the law makes it eligible. Now, for the eligibility, and then, as I said before, then uh, with Doosan, we'll be uh, do, doing a bit of back and forth here, but the type of investments are uh, purchasing of uh, real estate. That could be either um, real estate, um, so residential, uh, otherwise could be commercial. Um, then the, the other option here is the possibility of looking at buying into a business. So the business purchase is something that is quite strong. And, um, and then we have the other options, which, which would be the deposit into a bank account of a certain amount of money, which is a little bit higher in this case. It's double the amount. It's not 500,000. It starts at 1 million and it's put into a bank deposit. And we're also talking about bonds. And in that case, we're talking about double the amount as well. So that would be 2 million. Now, a few things here, a few hints, I'd say, uh, given uh, the time where we're in and uh, given the fact that the government has announced the fact that this visa will be at some stage uh, cancelled or uh, reviewed. Um, I would suggest looking into an investment that is not so much about purchasing a property that you would like to go and live in necessarily or not at this stage, but probably looking into an option that gives you the possibility of getting the visa. So it's an eligible investment. And at the same time, and do some, we'll get, we'll get into the specifics here that can give you a return pretty much immediately. And that most importantly makes it eligible for the visa. Okay, so sometimes when we're talking about a property, real estate, uh, residential, you might want to come over to Spain and understand what could be the best uh, investment option to come and live here. Um, there's other options that make it a lot quicker and less to think about that still meets the requirements. Okay, so that that's why the business uh, buying into a business or certain type of residential um, opportunities of real estate can be can be considered. As a, as a good option, as a strong option here. Now, the timeline of events, I think this is important for us to understand here. So first of all, yes, we need to understand what type of investment we want to make. Then we move forward with the transfer of the title deed, and that's when we get into the specifics about the visa. Okay, now, for the visa here, what happens is that the time frame is quite uh, short. Okay, so we don't have to be worried about the processing time. So typically, it would take about uh, three weeks to get the response. And when there's no specific response, we get for granted that the visa has actually been um, given. So it's been granted and finalized. That's when the visa kicks in. So obviously the person or the family or the couple will have to come to take the biometrics here in Spain in order to activate the visa. The visa per se will have a duration of one year, then it will be renewed. So that will give you the possibility of staying in Spain for a longer period of time, even depending on where you're going to be applying for the visa. So where you're going to be present, if either onshore, so in Spain, or offshore outside of the country at the time of the visa application. Once the visa is given to you, um, you've got the possibility of coming over to Spain and you can stay in Spain, you can work here, you've got access to uh, the education system, and um, you, you pretty much can start living a normal life here in Spain without any problems. Um, 
it doesn't change too much in terms of legal status. I think this is important to understand the timeline here is that the visa initially gives you um, a residency that is subject to the fact that you must keep the investment active. Okay, that's the most important thing here. We, we need to make sure that the investment that is made is an investment that uh, keeps remaining active. Otherwise, obviously, there's no reason for the visa to remain existing here. Once we get to the five year, um, then to the milestone of the five year period of time, that's when you move on to permanent residency status. Okay, so until then, you had pretty much a temporary visa that is subject to the, you know, having the same rights here, but that's when you, five years after, down the track, you uh, become as a legal status as a permanent resident of, uh, of Spain. Then the second part, okay, the second uh, part of the, of the events here is that moving towards the 10 year uh, milestone, that's when you can eventually, if you wanted to, even apply for citizenship here in Spain. Um, but yes, we, we, you need to move forward and you need to stay, uh, you know, have the visa active for those amount of years. In terms of presence in the country, this might be something of interest uh, in terms of Christians. Uh, there's no real rule or anyway, there's nothing specifically indicated when it comes to holding the visa within the fi first five years. What we do advise getting into from the fifth year onwards and moving towards the eligibility of the citizenship is instead the fact that um, that's when um, typically it would be important to take a look at the fact that half of the year would be important to be in Spain in order to um, to become eligible for citizenship if it is something that you're interested in. So you don't have to necessarily apply for citizenship, but you can still keep the residency as long as we keep the investment the investment option open. Um, now, uh, getting into to more details about the investments, I think probably I can pass it on to you, Dusan, about the type of investments that we have. So we could probably open the other uh, the other file for the investment options, and then we can move forward with the with the other aspects of uh, of the visa and uh, of the investment options uh, together. Absolutely, thank you very much, Ricardo, for um, for your for your um, explanation about the golden visa. Um, and as you as you mentioned, uh, once um, once a client or once anyone obtains property here in Spain, they qualify for the golden visa, providing it's over five hundred thousand. So um, that's why we have created um, this um, hotel investment. And I think if anyone has previously explored Portugal as an option, they probably have seen this uh, many many times over. Um, I, I won't take too much time to explain um, to explain um, the, the investment. I'll just show the financials um, and explain that um, Benrock has commercial uh, assets and hotel available in Spain, uh, in mostly in um, Madrid and Barcelona. Um, this particular asset we're talking about now is a hotel in Madrid. It's uh, located in um, Canillejas, um, Canillejas district, uh, which is. Um, which is basically just between the airport and um, and the and the center, the Gran Via. Um, this is what you're looking at now are the renderings of the hotel, uh, what it would look like once it's completed next year. Um, this is the district that I said, Canillejas. Um, it's just between um, uh, um, just between airport and and the city center. It's currently located. In, it's considered like a smart hub of Madrid. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. I just want to go to this um, slide of um, this particular slide. So the investment, as you can see, is 500,000 euros. Um, and we guarantee 3% yield for the 10 years uh, of operations. Um, so instead of paying annually 3%, which is 15,000 euros, we pay all, all of it upfront. So all 10 years are being paid upfront, which means all 150,000 euros um, of, of um, worth of returns are being paid upfront. Another benefit of investing into this hotel is that the VAT um, has, to be, has to be paid, but it's paid by us, by the developer. Um, and the VAT has to be paid because it's a brand new asset. Uh, whenever there is a brand new asset, VAT of 21% has to be paid. So, um, and that's another benefit of this is that VAT is covered by us, the developer. In addition to all of it, um, there is a guaranteed buyback after 10 years of operations of the hotel, which is at 500,000 euros. 
So to summarize all of this is um, a client invests 500,000 euros. Contractually, two weeks after signing the title deed, we provide return of an investment of 150,000 euros. And 10 years down the line, a guaranteed buyback of 500,000 euros. Another benefit of, of uh, investing into this particular property or this asset is that the returns are guaranteed by the developer or us, uh, whereas the buyback is guaranteed by the hotel operator. Um, the hotel operator of this particular hotel is a Soho boutique group. Um, for those who have been to Spain or maybe stayed in their hotels, it's a well-known hotel operator group in, in Spain. They um, have over, um, in their ownership, over 40 hotels all around, um, all around Spain. Uh, and that brings um, the next, um, the last benefit is that um, for all um, interested clients, for all clients that invest into, or all investors that invest into this um, asset, they will provide seven day complimentary stay in any Soho boutique hotel in Spain. Um, and obviously this is the, our track record collaborating with Soho Boutique. This is um, the Soho Boutique Hotel in Torremolinos. There is um, there is one in Sevilla that's been operational since 2019. Um, there's several in Madrid, one operational since 2019, um, the Cordoba 2021. Um, another one, uh, in, another one in in Madrid, oh, it's being opened in 2024. Um, this currently is again another one in Albaracín, Madrid, in construction. Um, we're also constructing San Sebastián and Ma Malaga. So, um, I just want to ask, ask ask a question. So, with these kind of investments, um, uh, we don't have to worry about the residential part of of the golden visa because you can even if that is taken away by the by the government, uh, the this this kind of investment will still be allowed. Is that correct? That depends. That depends on what exactly does government change. At the moment, we're not um, the 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 changes are not made public yet. What uh, what okay. we're we're hoping and or, or let's say what the track record in the industry was is that they first remove residential from from a qualifying asset um, and leave commercial. However, that might not be true in this case. Okay, so we so if we had, for example, if we took out a. a a golden visa on our own home. So we buy a 500,000 pound home, uh, we go and live in it. What happens when we come to renew if the golden visa has since been, been canceled? Will it, will it, will we still be able to, to renew or would that probably not happen? Um, I absolutely thank you, Christopher, for asking this question. It's uh, one of my favorite questions to ask, um, to to answer. Um, it's so once uh, um, you once an application for golden visa has been submitted to the government, um, the uh, investors um, get something that is called acquired rights, and um, they acquired rights for residency. Uh, acquired rights in Spain are considered basic human rights. So they um, anything that changes that, um, let's say, jeopardizes um, someone's acquired rights cannot affect them. So um, once the law changes, it will be an effective date. Um, let's, and let's say it's uh, December 31st next year. Um, so up until that point, whoever submitted their application is going to be considered based on the current law or the law that has been effective at uh, the time of their submission of their application. Uh, any changes after that will not uh, will not affect um, the investor. So the, what who will be in fact affected are those people who did not manage to submit their application. They won't be able to submit the new application uh, and those are the people that will be affected submissions that have been already made will not okay and, if, and consequently add, renewals if i can add just something sorry to interrupt you there that as you said Dusan, only when changes eventually uh, become more favorable after the law changes then in case in that case they may, may be applied to who applied within uh, before the changes otherwise the certainty of the law there applies once you apply for the visa within the time frame so less favorable doesn't change more favorable eventually could be applied to the visa applicant at the second stage okay um let me let me go through some some of our questions from the audience um 
Now, obviously, this gets into other areas, but Adam is asking, does obtaining a golden visa require all tax to be paid in Spain, even if you are not a permanent resident? Do so, you want the reporter to jump in with that? Yeah. Uh, yes, sure, please. You can, uh, uh, okay. Uh, it's, again, one of my favorite questions. <laughs> um, so <laughs> um, so uh, once, once you have a golden visa in Spain, um, as, as you said, Ricardo, it's, uh, let's say a conditional permanent residency, condition being that you have a property or, or any investment in Spain. What that doesn't mean is that you are a tax resident of Spain. Becoming a tax resident is spending 183 days in Spain, that is what triggers tax residency. Spending 180 days in Spain does not trigger tax residency, and those having golden visa will be considered as a non-tax resident. Non-tax residents pay 24% income tax on the income generated inside Spain only. Okay, so that's good news, um, I guess. Uh, 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 leaves you uh, leaves your options open so how many days on a golden visa residential to golden visa, well any golden visa in fact how many days do you have to be in spain for there are no physical stay requirements oh wow okay and what about working um uh, so we've got a question here uh which i'll come to in a minute but what about if i want to work so uh, with a golden visa i can do anything can i Yes, you've got full working rights with the visa, so you're able to work and be employed or self-employed. You've got a full working rights visa for both the, for yourself and for the family members who are allowed to work. Absolutely. I mean, OK, yeah. yeah, that was the question. If someone is planning on coming. Yeah, my wife and I are hoping to retire to Spain from the UK together with our working daughter. Uh, so they can come, they can get the golden visa and their daughter can can work there. Correct. Yes. Probably, sorry, yeah. um, we might have to look into, sorry, just um, if we're talking about a working daughter, then probably we might have to consider the possibility of understanding who forms, who's the applicant and if the daughter can be, in this case, included in the same family unit. Eventually, we might need to consider or at some stage uh, down the track. Uh, the, your daughter, if I'm talking to the audience here, uh, might have to become a, um, a separate applicant because obviously, if you're part of the family units at the moment, then we need to understand what type of income that you as a daughter are generating at this stage to understand if you can be part of the same family unit at this stage or not. Sure. OK. And uh, th um, uh, the same questioner has asked, has mentioned that he's buying two properties that together add up to 500,000 euros. Is that a that's not a problem? It can be several properties, can it? Um, I, I can um, I can take also this one. Um, absolutely, it can be commercial, residential, and a parking space. It can be seven parking spaces. It can be any asset that is up to five hundred thousand euros. However, as Ricardo and I keep mentioning, the law is changing and is changing rapidly, yeah. more rapidly than than we have expected or hoped for. So. Um, Acquiring residential property or, or, or parking space takes a little uh, more time than acquiring commercial assets, um, simply because it has the the residential requires um, client or investor to go two times uh, through the due diligence process that is quite lengthy, whereas commercial is only once. Um, and selecting uh, selecting residential property takes longer time because people want to you know everyone wants to select their own asset or their own apartment whereas commercial is quite easier to select it's less emotional yeah no absolutely i can i can appreciate that uh okay so in terms of those who do want to buy residential property a home how basically how, how long have they got if you're a betting man how, how soon would you say they have to get get over to Spain and find that property? I would say tomorrow. Maybe Ricardo <laughs> is more optimistic. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, that's what right. say until... Exactly. Sorry. Okay, that's interesting. Right, um, more, uh, more questions. Are there any medical insurance requirements? Yes, you must have a health insurance uh, in order to um, to be eligible for for the visa, and then you can still access the uh, system here in Spain. But it is important to one of the requirements when we go ahead with the preparation of the application is to is to have a private health insurance at the time of application. Okay. Now, 
um, for British people, uh, we are not used to getting insurance, and our health doesn't 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 really affect much. But suppose, for example, you're recovering from breast cancer, or you've got half a dozen pre-existing conditions. Is that does this often become a problem with getting the medical insurance and, and hence the visa? I would pass on that to do to you do some please uh, for that. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll happily answer that. So um, I've had several different, um, I have actually several different cases of the, of similar question uh, that you've asked. I've had personally a client who's HIV positive coming from the US. Um, so obviously when, when submitting an application for private healthcare insurance, there is application that a person is, um, the person is let's say, filing. So you can choose not to disclose pre-existing conditions. The importance of private healthcare insurance is that there is, uh, th th there is any. That is, cover, that is covered in Spain, that any private health insurance in Spain, uh, that there's any coverage. Uh, obviously with golden visa and, uh, and uh, the residency card, their private healthcare, uh, private healthcare uh, and public healthcare is accessible to investors. So any company or any insurance carrier that is, that is uh, willing to, to cover or if an investor discloses all of their pre-existing conditions that is willing to cover um, is, is acceptable, or if you can choose not to disclose pre-existing coverage, choose the most basic um, coverage and rely on the public health care in Spain, which is, um, to be honest, quite, really quite good. Okay, good, um, good answer, good question. Thank you. If I, Trevor is asking, if I buy a house for 500,000 euros, get a golden visa, sell a house after two years, buy another one for 500,000, is that okay? Uh, the answer is uh, yes and no. Um, yes, in terms of the current law, um, you, you can always change the qualifying asset. No is because of the changes of law. If the law changes and removes property as a qualifying um, asset, it means that at the time you want to change your golden visa from one asset to another, uh, the law will say, well, it, property no longer qualifies. What you will be able to do is renew the visa um, attached to the existing property or the property you initially used but if you keep if you ch change the property uh, if you want to change the property and the law changes that removes property from a qualifying asset then there's no asset to attach the visa and the visa might be um, cancelled okay i hope um, i explained that well if not i can try in another way um well we will um well, we've got uh, there's lots of questions, so we'll we'll uh, we'll hope. And what so what I would have have said at, what I what I should have said at, at the start is that we'll give you the contact details of Dusan and and Ricardo. So we do hope that readers will get in touch, viewers will get in touch with them afterwards, and you know put those questions uh, di um, directly. Um, Jeffrey has asked a question about the hotel de uh, developments. Uh, he says the seven nights stay in the hotel is that one time only or every year? That is uh, based on a renew. That's per renewal period. So renewal period. Once you have a golden visa, it's valid for three years, and then it's renewed every five years thereafter. So every renewal period, there is a seven night complimentary stay in in the Soho boutique uh, hotels. Okay, excellent. Now, I believe I might in saying that you can use an existing property that you've already bought for your gold, golden visa. Um, Guy has asked, what's the process for valuing current properties that might be eligible for, for a golden visa? Well, in these cases, what has to be done is that we, we need to get, and this is something that we can do for you from a distance, I mean, depending on where the person is or if they're already in Spain, we need to have a person who evaluates the, the, the property and obviously has to be balanced with what is the, the value of the market. And then if, that, if it does meet the requirements there, then that type of property, that land, can be eligible for the uh, for the visa and become therefore the the product. Let's say that becomes uh, the possibility to apply for for it or make it eligible. If I can just jump in um, to to add to what Ricardo has said, um, the the property has to be bought after October 2014, 2013, sorry, and it has to show five hundred thousand euros in the title deed. Got it. Okay, that's that that's very clear. Okay, uh, we have basically run out of time. I'm I'm afraid I've got so many more questions to ask, but um, we we have 
uh, more webinars coming up with Hogan Assets. So, so do look at, on our page and you'll see the next one's coming up. But it, uh, in the meantime, I would like to say thank you to our excellent speakers, Ricardo and Dusan. You've made, um, you made it really, uh, you know, it's very inspiring to see that we can do it. Um, it's not difficult to get a visa to live in, in, uh, in Spain. I appreciate we rattled through the presentations quite quickly early on. So we'll send uh, the presentations, at, uh, the, the PDFs out to viewers. So don't worry if you didn't get to see everything. We will make sure you get sent the details. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much for uh, for attending. Thank you very much to Dusan and, and, uh, and Ricardo. And good luck in your uh, property search and search for a new life in spain thank you very much bye-bye thank you thank you very much thank you thanks bye-bye